What is up guys, Bob Buskirk here and we're back with another BIOS video. This one is on Gigabyte's AB350 Gaming 3, that's of course part of their AMD B350 line and this BIOS should be pretty much the same and it's actually extremely similar to their X299 as well as their Z270 motherboard so if you have used those boards in the past you'll be pretty familiar with this BIOS um, it's really easy to go through so first we have our easy mode here and this is just you know quick easy information and a couple easy settings that you can change um, so first we have our information right here as you can see the board that we're running and the processor and our speed and, and our memory that we have installed CPU temperature in real time as well as our V core and another temperature sensor right here um, our DRAM status you can see we have all four of the dim slots populated with eight gigabytes of DDR4 and the frequency that it's running at our SATA information we only have one drive uh, connected so you can see that right here over here is easy OC so it's not easy OC is actually not supported on this board so that is not working as you can see um, AMD RAID Expert 2, you can turn that on or off. And we go to over here to boot sequence. Um, so you can go ahead and click in and then you can change these. Uh, so whatever you want to boot from, um, you can select your sequence very easily. CPU fan profile, you can see right here um, that we just have our CPU fan and other fans running uh, right now. So we just have that and it tells you the speed in real time. And then we have Smart Fan 5, which you can go ahead and click into. And in here, you can set your fan curves um, for each fan. So for each connector on the board, you can set your own fan curve. So if you're wanting something more powerful or you want it to ramp up faster, you can go ahead and do that. Um, we also can um, set the fan speed controls on normal, but you can set it to silent, manual, or full speed. So if you want a fan just blasting at full speed the whole time, you can set that up. Um, and then for the fan, you know, how it ramps up, you can set it by the temperature control unit, which would be the CPU, um, the temperature interval, so how long it, it goes before it checks the temperature. And then fan control mode, um, you can set it, set it to auto, which will auto select. You can set it to voltage or PWM mode, depending on the fan that you have installed. We have all of our temperatures, and there's actually six temperature sensors on this board, which is actually pretty cool because it is a, it is a budget board. So we have six different temperature sensors all what you can see the temperatures right there cpu fan uh warning you can have it enabled or disabled and uh temperature warning you can have that enabled disabled those are good to actually turn on um because if the fan is getting uh, the fan turns off for some reason or the temperature gets too hot you'll get a warning which would be good we'll get out of there and that is uh the easy mode it's all you can really change in easy mode if you want to do some system tuning or dive down deep we have the classic mode, um, which is easy, as you can see, to switch between the two. And if you want to bring the other one back up, you can do that. Um, so here we have the MIT, and that's where you can do all of your system tuning. So advanced frequency settings, um, you can change the CPU clock ratio. So a lot of people think the B350 chipset, you can't do overclocking on Ryzen chips, but you can. Um, so here you can change our uh, CPU clock ratio, and then you can change the core settings if you want different things that you want to control uh, with your chip, you can go ahead and do that. And then this is a memory multiplier, of course, um, ours is just set on auto be because we have memory that doesn't even have XMP, uh, an XMP profile on it. It's just like regular default uh, DDR4. We use that just to make sure it's compatible, um, but you can go ahead and change your multiplier to what you want. And then if we go back into our memory settings, we can go ahead and change our timings as well. Um, so you can see our timings here. We can go in and change those if we want to. Advanced voltage settings, these are all the uh, you know V-core voltages and things like that, and your DRAM voltage. So if you are doing overclocking and you want to pump up that volt voltage, you can go ahead and do it here. PC health status, it just it's kind of like a real-time uh, view of mostly your voltages. And it lets you know if your case is open. Um, there is a sensor on there. So if you have a case, you can connect it to there and do that. Miscellaneous settings, nothing really there. Except for PC slot configuration, you can set the Gen 1 through 3. And then Smart Fan 5, we went into that, but it is here as well. It's the exact same thing we saw on the Easy page. 
and we'll go over to system and this is just stuff on your system so the board the bios version this is always good to check too to see what bio version you are running um, because it's likely when you get your board you're gonna want to update that bios especially um, on Ryzen all of the bios updates make the Ryzen platform much more stable so it's always good to check and have all that um, under BIOS, this is just some of your BIOS, uh, your boot options, fast boot, uh, things like that, Windows 10 features, network stack. This is also where you can set your user password and administrator password if you want to go ahead and set that. Peripherals, um, this is kind of like everything that's that's going on, um, different things with USB, USB DAC up and stuff like that. Um, one thing that you do have here is RGB Fusion. Um, so you can do this actually on the uh, in the BIOS itself. So you can set different modes, uh, pulse mode, color mode, static mode, flash mode, and you can of course set, set a static color here as well. Um, it's good that it's in a BIOS. Um, you know, if you don't like installing extra software, you can do it all here and don't have to worry about it. And um, over to chipset, this is just everything to do with the chipset. This is all your SATA modes and everything like that. Um, you know, you can set different things and see, you know, where your SATA drives are and all that kind of stuff. And then under power, this is just power settings. So, you know, power on by keyboard, power on by mouse, um, you know, alarm, wake on land, stuff like that. And then save and exit. And one thing I like about here is one, we have our setting for optimized defaults. So I've done this, I'm sure you've done this. You mess something up, you're overclocking and you just forget what you changed and you can't get your system to boot or something's wrong. You just wanna load the defaults. This is how you do it. It's just, it just makes it so much easier, especially if you're wiping a system or something like that, you want to load everything back to the defaults, you can go ahead and do it here. I also like boot override. So when I am um, installing Windows, I want to boot from my flash drive first. And then when it restarts, I don't want to have to, you know, worry about taking my flash drive out if I don't want to. Um, you can, So you can boot first from the flash drive with boot override, and then it will just go through your normal boot cycle, which I like. And you can save and load profile. So if you have like an overclocking profile or a gaming profile, you can save that there. And then lastly, um, down here, we do have QFlash and um, Smart Fans. We went over Smart Fans twice, I'm not gonna go over it again. QFlash, um, this allows you to easily update your BIOS through a uh, flash drive. So you can download the BIOS off the Gigabyte website and then you can go ahead and flash it. It's really easy to do. Alternatively, you can just download the BIOS and do it through Windows if you want as well, but this is a way to do it. If you are having issues, maybe booting into Windows or something like that, or just having a stability issue, this could help you um, so you don't even have to have Windows installed to do that. And that is pretty much it for the BIOS, guys. There's not a whole lot here, um, you know, but it, it has everything that you're gonna need. And one thing I like about Gigabyte's BIOS is that it's just, it just works. There's nothing like quirky or weird about it. It's not laggy. It just works and everything is easy to find. And of course, that's most important. I know most of you guys aren't even gonna be in the BIOS that much, um, so, you know this just just works right off the bat but if you have any questions about this bios go ahead and leave it in the comment section below till next time catch you guys later